Good morning kids. Welcome back to our uh, high voltage engineering. Today's topic will be measurement of peak values of a given signal using spear gaps. We have come across this spar gaps or spear gaps but for different applications. We have seen this spar gaps being used as triggering devices when we have gone through this impulse generator circuits for measurement of impulse voltages. We have used these spear gaps as protective devices when we are employing this potential dividers. Now today's class is aimed at using these spear gaps or spar gaps particularly for the measurement of peak signals, sorry peak values of the signals. By the end of this presentation, I hope you will be able to explain how a spear gap is used for the measurement of peak values of the given voltage signal. It works on a very simple principle that every electrode gap or a spar gap has a specific spark power voltage under given atmospheric conditions. This particular principle is used to measure the peak value of the given voltage signals if you know the electrode spacing. There are different types of spar gaps based upon the structure of the electrodes which are employed. It is just like your parallel bit capacitor. It just goes with the shape of the electrode which you are employing. See there are different types of electrodes based upon their shape. One is a spear gaps, the other one is a uniform field electrode gaps, very similar to your parallel bits. The other one is a rod gaps and the other one is a horn gaps, just like uh, the electrodes will be in the form of a bull horn. So out of all these things, out of all these different shapes of the electrodes, spear gaps which do employ spears as electrodes, these are extensively used for the peak measurement of DC AC and also impulse voltages. Because it is observed that they offered very high accuracy and the breakdown of the spear gaps is independent of the voltage waveform. So that's why spear gaps are widely used than uniform field electrode gaps and uh, rod gaps. Coming to the spear gaps, they can be arranged in two configurations. One is a horizontal configuration, the other one is a vertical configuration. In the vertical configuration, two spears, the lower one will be grounded, the, to the upper one high voltage will be applied. The other configuration is horizontal configuration where you can apply your uh, voltage at the end of the two terminals or you can apply voltage here and you can keep this one grounded. But make sure that these two are maintained at same height from the ground. They are maintained at same voltage from the ground. And the other one is these two spheres must be identical in size and shape. So whenever you are applying voltage, to make sure that this doesn't damage this arrangement, you basically use some amount of resistance, what you call it as a protective resistance or a series resistance. So you do employ a series resistance, its value will be somewhere around 100 to 1000 kilo ohms for AC DC and it will be somewhere around 500 ohms for impulse voltage in practice. This is basically used between the source and the spear gap to limit the breakdown current because if the spark power happens immediately the current will be very high. So to limit this breakdown current we will be employing a series resistance and also to suppress any unwanted oscillations in the source voltage when the breakdown happens suddenly. And the voltage which to be measured is applied between the two spheres. So whatever the voltage which you want to measure is to be it is to be applied between the two spheres. And the spacing between these two electrodes gives a measure of the spark power voltage. 
So, very simple concept. Let us suppose if I am using air as a directory. If 1 centimeter of air is there, then automatically I know that 30 kV will be the, for example, 30 kV will be the breakdown step. If the breakdown occurs for 2 centimeters, then automatically the applied voltage will be 60 kV. If I am, the breakdown occurs for 10 centimeters of air, then the applied voltage will be somewhere approximately 30 into 10. It is 300 kV. So, very simple principle. So, you can measure the voltage if you know the spacing between these two electrodes. So, there is a certain procedure of how to accurately know this breakdown voltage or applied voltage. When you are going for this AC and DC signals, voltage is uniformly increased until spark power occurs in the gap and this process is repeated. Voltage is uh, slowly increased till the spark power is happening in the gap. So, you will be measuring that voltage and the spacing between them. So, thereby you will be knowing that voltage. This process is to be repeated 5 times to make sure that you are having an accurate value. So, you repeat the process for 5 consecutive times and if the value which you are going to get during all these 5 times, if it is close enough, let us suppose take then less than some 3% plus or 3% tolerance, then you will be considering it as a final value and you will be declaring it as a peak value of the given signal. This is the same for both DC and AC signals. You measure the voltage as per the procedure, but you repeat it 5 times to ensure that it is perfect. But it, in case of impulse voltages, as we have seen the impulse voltage will be having 50 percent flash or voltage or 100 percent flash or voltage. Let us suppose if I am going to measure 50 percent impulse voltage. So, what I will be doing is nothing but I will be setting up two voltage limits within a range of 2 percent. One is the maximum limit, the other one is the minimum limit. And at application of lower limit, two or four flash hours must take place. At application of higher uh, limits, eight or six flash hours. On a whole, ten flash hours must happen. So, the mean of these two limits will be taken as 50 percent flash hour voltage. And the construction and assembly of this is PR gaps now. The procedure as you have seen, very simple. Now, coming to the construction, the components. You do require two metallic spheres, identical ones, and these are to be suspended, right? So, you do require two shanks, just like you have shafts in your machines, you will be required shanks and operating gear, so because you are supposed to adjust the spacing between these two electrodes. So, you do require some operating gear to adjust the spacing between these two spheres, and you do require insulator supports. So, as we have seen the important components of uh, spear gaps are two identical metallic spheres, shanks, operating gear and then the insulator supports. There are certain features of the metallic spheres which you are supposed to consolidate on. The two spheres must be identical and the diameters must be same. There are some standard values of the di diameters which have been mentioned there and they are usually made up of brass or copper or aluminium. Aluminium is generally employed in the market because they are very cheap and make sure that the surface of these spears is uh, free from dust or grease or any other material. They must have a very smooth surface and the curvature must be uniform and the spacing is so designed such that the flash over ne occurs near the parking point only. The other construction features have been mentioned here. You can go through these things. This is the vertical arrangement of the spear gaps. You are supposed to replicate the same when you are being asked in the examination. The specifications very clearly. And this is a horizontal configuration. 
and uh, I'll show you. See, if you see, this is the two spheres, and this particular one is called as a sphere shanks. These are the sphere shanks, and this is the operating gear, which consists of a motor basically for changing the separation between the electrodes. And this is the high voltage terminal through which high voltage is applied to this one, to the top square. P indicates the sparking point. This is the sparking point where basically spark starts. And uh, make sure that the specifications are intact when you are drawing this thing in your examination. And moving ahead, and another important topic is uh, the factors which do influence the measurements when you using this uh, spear gaps. There are certain factors which do influence the spark over voltage of the spear gaps. Few of them have been mentioned here. The first one being the nearby earth objects and next is the atmospheric conditions and humidity and the irradiation levels near with the spheres and the polarity and the rise time of the voltage waveforms. We will see step by step. The first one, the effect of nearby earth objects. There are two renowned electrical scientists, Kuffel and Husbands. Those have done, these people have done research on the effect of these uh, earth objects. They have placed some earth objects near your uh, arrangements and they have observed that when there is any nearby earth object with respect to your sphere arrangement, spherical arrangement, the breakdown voltage is going to be reduced. And they have developed an empirical formula which has been shown here. So, whenever there are any nearby objects, earth objects, the spark over voltage is going to be reduced. So, that's why make sure that there are no nearby earth objects near your uh, measuring device. The second one is your atmospheric conditions. These are going to impact your breakdown voltage. The first one is the air density factor, which most of the times we people neglect. But literally speaking, the air density varies with the change in temperature and pressure of the air medium. So, whenever there is a change in both temperature and pressure, the air density will vary. And when the air density varies, then automatically the spark power voltage is going to vary. Let us suppose V0 represents the standard or the voltage at the standard temperature and pressure. We know that standard temperature and pressure 20 degrees centigrade and 760 torque. Let us suppose V0 is a voltage there. Then if you want to measure the voltage at some different pressures and temperatures, you are supposed to use K. This is some empirical constant. The formula, this K is a function of air density factor. You are supposed to determine the value of air density factor. And based upon this air density factor, there will be a graph between D and K. So for that value of D, you choose the value of K and employ here to get your desired value of D. And the other factor is humidity as it has already been observed many times by the electrical scientists that the spark or voltage increases with the humidity. So whenever there is any partial pressure of water vapor, if the pressure of the water vapor increases in there then automatically the spark or voltage also increases. And the other one is the irradiation. See, as we have seen in our first words, if you take an uh, ionization chamber, you keep some radiation source near it, then automatically it creates some electrons. So that's why if small gap spacings are there, if any radiation is present near it, then it is going to ignite your chamber. So that's why the first point is illumination of sphere gaps with UV or X rays. It aids easy ionization and gaps. So make sure that there is no radiation or the sources of radiation near your chambers. And effect of polarity and the waveform. It has been observed that spark or voltage for both positive and negative polarity impulses are different. Even though the magnitudes are same, the spark or voltage are different. So and there was another observation that the wavefront and wave tail durations also influence the breakdown voltage. 